Good afternoon, folks. I trust everyone is safe and well. I don't know about you, but I'm definitely starting to suffer from a little bit of cabin fever. Welcome to the sixth Open Classroom Civil Designer Software webinar. Today is Wednesday, which is Roads Day, Host, which is Roads Day with Cameron Boyle as your Civil Designer Software Facilitator. As always, please feel to use the text messenger chat service on your GoToWebinar floating toolbar to ask us any questions you may have during today's presentation. So without further delay, Cameron, please take it away. Uh, sorry, Cameron, um, just before I hand over to you, apologies for the false start. Uh, those of you using our free lockdown work from home versions of Civil Design and Alicad, please note that the initial 30 day licenses will soon be expiring. To renew these licenses, please click on the yellow working from home button on the civildesigner.com website homepage and follow the instructions at the bottom of the next page, which is the trial and work from home version page. Okay, Cameron, this time, please take it away. Thank you very much, Charles. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Last week, we designed this off ramp onto the interchange. And this week, I'm going to show you how you go about doing your road markings and linear road furniture. I'm going to take care drawings, and I'm going to show you how you can go and manipulate them in order to get to a point where you're applying them to your road design. Without further ado, let's get started. The majority of the functions that I'm going to show you today is under the signage menu. If you've installed the, the South African version of Civil Designer, you've automatically got the SADC Road Traffic Signs Manual built in by default. And if you installed the UK installation, You've got the UK traffic signs manual published by the Department of Transport. If I were to, for instance, go to add road markings, linear markings, regulatory markings, I've below over here gone and drawn in all the road markings so that you can see what they look like. Using these road markings, I'm going to go and apply them to my road design. I'll also show you how you can customize your road markings. We'll look at arrows customized arrows and then I'll end off with adding linear road furniture. I'm going to change to my drawing. You would normally go and do this on top of a road design but today I'm taking it back to the classroom. I'm going to show you all the basics. Let's call it the, the mechanics or the architecture behind your road markings. Using this polyline I'm then putting some linear road markings. I go to signage, add road markings, now I'm going to go and select continuity line. Looking at my options available to me, I'm going to change my mode to standard. And in that case, I'm going to use this entire red polyline. You can go and specify which continuity dimensions to use. I'm going to go and select the 2x2. Two two. In that case, you'll see the road markings will have a marking of 2 meter length. I'll have a gap of 2 meters and two meter length again. Find gap point, I'm going to ignore at this stage. I'm going to put in a start point or start gap of five meters. In that case, you'll see that the marking will start five meters after the start of my polyline. The road marking width will be 100 mils and the offset from the polyline will be three meters. Keeping that in mind, I'm going to go below the polyline and left click. Another alternative is to change the mode to start endpoint, switch off my start gap, and then specify a fine gap point of 7 meters. I'm first going to go and select the polyline again, and then use fine gap point, specify a point. In that case, Civil Designer measures the 7 meters from the point I've clicked. And on the left hand side here, the measurement is done along the polyline. I'm going to select the point on the right hand side. Reading my prompt to indicate the stop point, I can then go and move. And as I move, I can see that the linear road marking has been drawn. Now, using the same dimensions on top there, I'm going to move on to the spline example. I can go and click on the spline and then go and specify a start point. And as I move my cursor, you can see that the marking has been drawn. Now I'm not limited to the one side, I can then move my cursor to the other side. That what I've explained is applicable to your road markings, but 
You can also use the spline and the polyline to insert your linear road furniture. I'm going to change my view axis and I'm going to put in some linear road furniture. Going back to signage and I'll explain at a later stage how you go and create your linear road furniture. You would go and specify which furniture entity to use. Specify the distance between the furniture. Indicate the spline. Specify a start position. And as you move your cursor, you will see your furniture being drawn. Changing my furniture type. And then moving along the linear road furniture changes direction. Viewing this in a 3D format, I can go and right click render view. I have the option of either flying along the spline, in that case you can see that trajectory symbol showing me the path. Alternatively, I could go to fly through and run the fly through. So in that case, I can see my road furniture in a 3D format. Using what we've learned from this drawing, I'm going to go back to my project. In addition to using the polyline and the spline, you can also use road display lines. Let me show you a road display line. I've selected the road we're currently working on, and then I'll use line one. I'll specify the center line in this case, the road was designed as an off-ramp, so this is my center line. And I'll put in an offset of 0 0.3. If I were to go and click on OK, that white dotted line is a road display line. And I can use these display lines in order to go and put in my road markings. I've got one on the right-hand side as well as one on the left-hand side, which of course I can go and turn off at a later stage. Looking at the actual road markings this time, I go to signage, add road markings, traverse markings, let's put in a stop line. You have the option of also specifying text, I just want the line in your own customized width. Clicking on my start position, indicate stop position, right click and quit. Looking at the linear markings, I'm going back to signage. We give you a whole library of markings that you can choose from. So I'm going to use one of these. I'm going to show you how it's done. I go to right edge lane. I'm going to use the standard. In that case, I'll use the entire road display line. I'm going to ignore find gap point. The start gap will be where I click. The width of the line that I draw is going to be 150 mils. And then the offset from the road display line will be 100 mils. Going on the inside of the road display line, left click. We also give you the option of putting in the left hand side. Instead, I'm going to go back to signage. And I'm going to go and customize my linear marking. I go just to the inside of my road and I left click. Right click and quit. Looking at the internal lines. Beforehand I've measured my road width and I've divided it by three to give me the offset. Going just to the inside of my left edge road display line. I left click. Now I can go and specify where I want to start the line. As I move my cursor, you can see the line automatically being drawn. Doing the same for the right hand side, indicating my start position and then moving it down to the end. Taking a break from inserting these markings, I'm now going to go and put in text and arrows. 
Before doing so, I'm going to go to the road markings diagram. I'm going to go and hatch it and then use that as a marking. Going to my CAD mode, selecting draw hatch, and using the automatic perimeter function. I switched on detect islands, which would then automatically ignore the islands within the hatching. I simply go inside what I want to hatch and left click. And then I right click and accept. Right click and quit. Then I go and select my hatch, go to tools, and go and create a new block. Reading my prompt, it says indicate base point of block. So I go to where my geometry lines intersect, press I and enter. And this would be the hook point when I insert the symbol. If I were to go back to tools, go to blocks, block manager, you can see what my demo block looks like. So I've beforehand gone and created numerous blocks that I would then use for my road markings. Going back to my road design, going back to my roads mode, signage, looking at arrows. There's a whole library of arrows you can go and select. Alternatively, I'm going to select the custom option. Select arrows. Search for anything with five meters. And then go and scroll down to the most appropriate one. Import the selected arrow. Now this would be a good opportunity to explain fine lanes and fine gap. I want my arrows in the middle of the lanes and I have three lanes. So I'm going to use the fine lane option. And what that would do then is it would go and divide my road width into three. Now before I use that function, I also want to go and use the fine gap. And that would be a offset from a point that I go and click. So let's use 30 meters, click on find gap point. Again, I'm using that road display line I explained earlier. I'm clicking on my start point to find the gap from. And it will then automatically go and measure the 30 meters from where I clicked. So I'm going to click there again. And I'm going to go to the other side of the road. It divides it into three. And I can go and place my cursor where I want the arrow to be. Selecting another arrow. Clicking on import selected again because I don't want to change the symbol. Let's look at some road markings. I want to go and put this at a certain offset to the arrow. So I'm going to change that to 5 meters. Click on find lanes. And again, find gap. Clicking on my road display line. Clicking on the gap point. Specifying which one I want to use. And then going across to the other side of the road. I want this in the center of my road, so I'm going to change find lanes to 1. Closing that. Now before I put in the furniture, I've got a CAD drawing here. Inside this CAD drawing, I've gone and put in hole or post as a 3D line, and then the panel as a 2D line. Go to my CAD, go and select Draw, Mesh Solids, in this case just use a tube. You can go and specify which dimensions to use. Click where you want it, and then right click and quit. 
Just to show you it in a 3D format, I can go and right click and render view. Let's use this for our road furniture. Back to the roads mode. I select tools, linear road furniture editor. So I'm going to go and create some new furniture for you. In this case, I go and select add. And let's call it demo. Using that CAD drawing I've just shown you, I can click on the browse button and go and select it. Inside that drawing, once you've created the panel in the post, you would save it as an object, like I did for the, the road text. Then, if you go to block, you'll see that you have the block options available to you. You could then go and save it or save as, and when you save it, you'll save it as a linear road furniture file. I'm first of all going to go and put in that barrier using this road display line. Again, I go to signage, add linear road furniture. Go and select a barrier, the distance between my posts. Click on the display line, specify the start point, and then move it along to the end point. Let's go and move that road display line. I'm going to utilize this for the street lights. Specify my start point. As I move my cursor, you can see the street lights being inserted. Let's go and view that in 3D. My 15 minutes is up. Thank you very much. Stay home, stay safe. See you next time. Back to you, Charles. Thank you, Cameron. I'm looking forward to road components next week from you. And thank you to everyone who attended today. Please remember to renew your work from home licenses. And please also follow us on LinkedIn. Uh, that's the Civil Designer software page. See you tomorrow at the same time same place using the same link for our weekly Sue and Storm class. Thank you very much and goodbye.